Hello, everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribers button and give this video a thumbs up. At the Denmusen, Tracy sat down with Stella on Gregory's bench. Stella thought about how great of a spot it was. Just also, Tracy slighted a mosquito on her neck and joked that she always attracted bloodsuckers and splunders. She marveled over the fact that she and Gregory had come musketeers, but she felt cheated and wished she would met him sooner. Stella could relate to the feeling and told Tracy about Marcus and why she would have to leave all those times ahead. She concluded that she would set up out that Marcus had failed a many days before. She thanked Tracy for hearkening. Tracy claimed that she had the time, and she took Stella's hand. Suddenly, Stella hit a mosquito on Tracy's hand, and the two laughed. At Christina's, Blaze got Christina some snacks, and they talked about their academic unborn child. Just also, there was a knock on the door, and Christina answered it to a crying Molly. Molly vented about her fight with TJ and about his putatively pent-up resentment. Christina guessed that he was having buyer's guilt about Christina being their surrogate, and the sisters agreed that they'd allowed, they'd formerly minced the issue out. Molly had to get back to work, so she hugged Christina and left. Blaze wondered if Christina had considered what would be if Molly and TJ resolve up. At dumbfounded, Christina realized that she demanded to figure it out. Andrian entered Alexis' office with champagne and two spectacles to celebrate their good rotation figures. Still, Alexis only scolded him for running blurted information as clickbait captions. She advised that he wouldn't want to square off with Laura. Diane arrived looking for details on the story about Laura looking into Heather's case. Adrian stormed out with his champagne, and Diane was shocked to learn that Alexis was helping Laura. Alexis reminded Diane that Diane herself had set a precedent for setting someone with a medical condition free when she would gotten Franco off the hook due to his brain excrescence. Alexis suggested that her frighted Diane keep quiet and hope no bone stumbled upon the case. In Laura's office, Trina wanted to know what Laura was doing regarding Heather. Laura explained that she would only wanted to see if Heather's condition had been represented in her court records, and there was no way to know how effects would go with Heather. There was a knock on the door, and Trina figured that she should leave anyway. Laura opened the door to Kevin, who figured he'd good timing and could run hindrance between the two. The three sat down, and he read the rearmost raider caption from his phone about Trina, sounding off about Laura's involvement in Heather's case. Trina claimed that she would know he talked to anyone, and Laura believed her as Alexis would have told her about it. Trina asked Laura to let her know of any developments. She promised not to do any interviews, and she left. Laura saw that she was supposed to do the right thing for all of her ingredients as mayor, indeed the bones, she did not like. She'd allowed, it was important that Heather get a fair hail. Kevin respected the stage she was taking, and she advised him to flash back that when people started calling for her head, she figured that he'd be her only support left, and she hugged him. At Pentonville, a guard attended Heather to the caller's area, but Heather did not feed the man at the table. He introduced himself as Curtis, Trina's father, and Heather put her head in her hands. He talked about how broken Trina had been since Spencer had failed as a result of Heather and her son's conduct. A crying Heather knew that Sari was shy to say, but she claimed that she was sorrier than he could ever know. Curtis wondered what Heather's plans for Trina would have been had Heather not been captured, and Heather replied that she authentically did not know. She explained that she flashed back everything she would done, but not why. He reflected that she sounded to be rehearsing for when her case was restarted, but she did not know what he was talking about. He told her about Laura looking into her case, and Heather decided to tell Laura to stop. She believed that she was where she belonged as a bad person who'd done bad effects. The guard returned for Heather, 
and Curtis stated that she would give him a lot to suppose about. He thanked her for her time and told her that he wouldn't be back, and Heather walked down with the guard. After Elizabeth and Jason took off their shoes and Jason rolled up his jeans, they sat on the edge of the pool with their bases hanging in the water. Elizabeth smiled because she had gotten Jason to take off his shoes. Do not tell anybody, Jason said with a grin. She assured him that his secret was safe with her. Their discussion turned to Finn. Jason indicted Finn of pushing her down. The question is, do I let him? Elizabeth wondered. She admitted that she could not go down that road again with Finn because she refused to immolate Jake and Aiden's physical and emotional safety. Jason assured her that he understood her decision. Yeah, because you actually hear me, she admitted. She opened up about how distant she and Finn had grown, but she conceded that Finn would not have hurt her. Jason agreed. Elizabeth admitted that she was glad that Jason had shown up. Yeah, me too, he said. Still, she was curious how Jason had known where to find her. Jason told her about Jake's phone call. That is how important your son loves you, Jason said. Jason wondered if there was anything differently, she demanded, but she assured him that he would done enough. Jason admitted that he was not in a position to give advice. Because I left you and Sam to raise our sons on your own, he said. Elizabeth asked if Jason had spent the times down being on holiday. He shook his head no. I did not suppose so, she said. I am then now, he promised. He pledged to do whatever he could to make up for the timepiece meal from Jake. Elizabeth was certain that showing up when Jake had called for help had counted a lot to their son. Counts for a lot with me, shedded. Brooklyn and Lois talked about their jests with drunkenness in their family. Lois reported the story of an aunt and uncle who had no way sought help and had therefore not been invited to the marriage. Lois hoped that Finn would commit to his own sobriety. Brooklyn declared that she and Chase would do everything they could to keep Violet safe indeed from her own father. Brooklyn was induced that Finn's situation would come a big fire for all of them. Lois was bothered that Brooklyn wasn't enjoying what was supposed to be the most joyful part of her life, but Lois was happy that Brooklyn had set up that kind of love. Finn sarcastically told Chase that he'd fall into line so Chase could stop reaching down from his pedestal because Finn would be down then in the slush with the rest of humanity. Chase admitted that Finn was an overgrown man, but added that Violet shouldn't have to watch her father tone, distract, and that's where we've a problem. Finn grew angry. Violet is the only good thing in my life, and I'll not let you and Brooklyn steal my son from me. So for the last time, get the hell out. Gio. Finn cried. Chase left. Finn quivered and began to cry. Thanks for watching if you like this video. So please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any updates.